Why do you want to go and fight in Ukraine? Well, you know, people have got the wrong idea. It's not I want to go and fight, it's just because of my family. Obviously, you know, that is my priority. Fighting isn't my priority, but it's going to be one of those ine inevitable things that I've got to do. Yeah. Um, so, just, just to explain to our viewers, you've got your uh, daughter who's in Nikolaev and you've got your wife and stepson who are in Mariupol. No, he's Zaporozhia. In Zaporozhia. Not um, far from Mariupol. Not no, far from really Mariupol. Far. Yeah, which is really close to, the, to, to uh, Donetsk. Well, yeah, but it's, it, Mariupol is um, under heavy bombardment at the moment. Mm. Um, and like I said, we're 100 kilometres away, so who knows? Um, luckily... My partner, she says that everything's fine at the moment um, and it's calm. Whether she's lying to me or not, I don't know. But I've heard the sirens go a few times. She said, she said it's all calm, but I think she's telling me things to stop me worrying. Uh, I don't know what's going to happen. I honestly don't. I mean, how have the past few weeks been for you, being here on your own in the UK with your family out there? Well, to be honest, uh, I would have gone weeks and weeks ago. I planned to go weeks and weeks ago, but obviously financially obviously, it's been difficult, so... Um, obviously, because I've got to support them and, and a few other families, um, it's been really hard. So now it's come to that point where it's going to get worse before it gets better. Well, I, it's going to get worse before it gets better. Yeah. And like I said to you earlier, I, I think this is the calm before the storm. You think there's more to come from from the Russians? And I think he's. I think he's got every intention of capturing Zelensky alive. And I think, personally speaking, I think that's his plan. Because it's, it's too soft, you know. The way he, the, the Russians are acting at the moment is too soft. So on Saturday you'll 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 get flying to Ukraine, and then what will be your journey then? And you're taking all your equipment from your from your 12 years serving as a as a yeah. British soldier. Well, no, no, it's a lot later, Kit, than that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I've got equipment out there, but obviously I can't get to it. Obviously because it's in the east, so it's no good good to me. Um, so I'm taking my own kit out with me um, that I've got. So. And it's extraordinary that you're willing to fight for Ukraine. I know your family are Ukrainian, but you're willing to go out there and fight yeah, for Yeah, but I'm Ukrainian by proxy. You know, it's, it's my, my home as well. So I can't face Ukrainians if I haven't bothered to try and do anything. You know, and, you know, later on, you know, I'm going to need their help. They're going to need my help. Do you see what I'm saying? It's, it's, it's going to be like that. Yeah. But I, 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 your, your mum's here. How, how does in, here in the UK? How does she feel about you going out to fight oh, for Ukraine? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> My mum uh, is not overly keen on Yulia, and uh, she's worried about Dasha, of course. But she's not happy about me going out there. No. I mean, basically, I had a big row about it last night. So I you know, just, you know, some people are not not support it. Even my own, you know, Yulia's not support it. She's saying, "Why are you come? You know, why are you coming? Why are you coming? We're perfectly fine." But. And why won't she come here to the UK? Oh, she's got several reasons. Uh, Max, who sees me as his father, um, he's autistic, quite badly autistic. Um, he's also got like disabilities because he can't walk easily, his feet are sort of sideways out. Um, she's got that reason. Her mum's dying. Um, her mum's up from the Donetsk, Donetsk region. And um, she's dying, so she, they've not given her long to live. I mean, last I heard, this was a week ago, it was two months. Mm. So I can understand wh where she's coming from. Mm. But, um, and, and, and you have experience of fighting in Ukraine. You, yes, you were there a few years ago. Yeah, just tell us a bit ab about that, what you can tell us. Well, what, how, how difficult it was. Well, it's, you know, you, especially for me, because I'm, it's a different language. You know, I speak some Russian, but you know, when you're dealing with these guys... Uh, you know, there's a lot of multinational with us. There was a lot of you know, um, Georgian... Uh, even Swedes, you know, so it's a difficult one. And communication problem, you know, there's going to be communication problems. We had all that out there. Um, we're going to have the same thing this time. It's going to be the communication. And it's, you know, with lots of foreign people wanting to fight, you know, it's going to be a very difficult situation. Yeah, different from last time. Professional. This is a professional army you're facing, oh, yeah, no, not separatists. No, no, these, these are not, you know, guys in uniform. These are not. You know, they, now they've been trained. They've been trained by the Canadians, the British, the Americans. Um, they've been trained well. You know, that is the difference. Back then, it was left to volunteer battalions, uh, as of right sector, radar, nipple one. Um, so it's a completely different scenario now.